All right, friends. Just finally got Wesley to sleep. Look, I look like I fell asleep too. I didn't. I just looked that way. I don't know if any of you can relate. I have to completely act like I'm falling asleep in order for him to chill out and go to sleep. It took quite a while. So I'm back to answer the rest of the questions. We also have Valentine's photos today, so I have a little time to answer questions right now. And once again, if I don't get to them all, I will jump back on later. Um, this is not gonna be a typical thing for us. I'm gonna really try to do it earlier in the morning, but today was a little bit of a different day. My husband and kids are gone anyways. So jumping on to a few other questions that came up. Now, if any of you have questions, um, then please write them because I want to make sure that they are answered for you. And if I don't get to answering them, um, this video, I will jump back on a little bit later. Okay. So there were answers, there were questions posted yesterday on our post that I put up on community carriage house. And so I wanted to continue answering those. Um, the next question is this, what do I do about weaning? Um, the, the mom who wrote this said, I'm not quite ready to wean yet, but I'm just curious, like, days first, nights first, like what do you do? How do you plan it out and what do you do? So there are a couple different ideas um, when it comes to weaning. Some people will night wean first. Um, often when um, it's the mom's decision to wean, um, maybe it's because night nursing has gotten challenging. Maybe she's feeling like she's not getting enough sleep. Maybe she's pregnant with another baby and nursing at night is just really uncomfortable. Um, so a lot of times I feel like if it's motivated at night, it's often mom who's saying, I need to sleep and I I'm, I'm, don't wanna nurse anymore at night. So if that's the case, then um, I think there's a few kind of guidelines when it comes to weaning. You need to talk to your child. Even if they are young, you need to explain what's going on, set clear boundaries, stick with them. There's nothing more confusing than telling your child, we're not going to nurse at night anymore, and then nursing them and having them be confused. So setting clear boundaries, clear expectations, have some tools in your tool belt ways to um, help your child process. Um, so, so I recently re uh, listened to this really phenomenal training about weaning, actually. And what this woman's suggestion was, I really liked. Um, she actually helps parents through this process. She said the weaning process can take sometimes months. So when parents come to her and like, okay, I'm ready to wean, like next week. She's like, mm, no, like if we're gonna do this gently, it may take time. And it's really based on how the child moves through these different steps more than it is like on this day, we're just gonna be done. Um, and this is her technique and her philosophy. So her technique, she actually has you manipulate daytime breastfeeding first. And so what she does is she says you need to start very clearly associating the activities before and after a breastfeeding session. So maybe that looks like we wake up in the morning and we breastfeed and then we eat breakfast. So if that's what you're going to do is you're going to wake up in the morning, you're going to breastfeed and then you're going to eat breakfast. You're going to to point that out to your child. Look, the sun came up. We're going to breastfeed now. This is what we do first thing in the morning. And then we're going to eat breakfast. And so creating these really clear patterns for your child. Um, maybe it's nap time. We eat lunch and then we're going to nurse and it's nap time. Or when you wake up from your nap, whatever it is, really clear associations. Maybe that's around bedtime too. We do this bedtime routine and we nurse and then we go to bed. So she suggested that you start talking about these times of day that you um, really like consistently breastfeed. And she actually has moms create a visual for their child, like a little book that maybe has pictures printed. Maybe you've printed your own photos of you breastfeeding. Maybe you've drawn pictures that show look at the baby nurses after they wake up in the morning and then they have breakfast, like shows these clear times of the day when you are gonna breastfeed. And set up this expectation and this routine, have this little book, talk to them with the book. Look, it's time for us to, you know, so when they ask to nurse, like you're basically you're gonna choose what you want your nursing pattern to look like during the day and really set that um, and work towards a pattern during the day first. And sitting with that boundary of like, oh, you know, if you want to breastfeed and it's, we just went to the park, but we're not supposed to nurse until you wake up from your nap, then I'm sorry, it's not time to nurse. Remember, we nurse when we wake up from our nap. So after you wake up from your nap, that's when we'll nurse. And then finding another activity. Um, let's go play. Let's read a book. Would you like to cuddle? Finding something to help them um, transition through this. I wanted to nurse right now, but mom said no. So what she suggests is that you manipulate the daytime feedings into a pattern first. This whole time, allowing your child to nurse at night as much as possible. 
possible as much as they want. So really letting them have the nighttime sessions and then this organization during the day. And she says that's kind of like the phase, the first phase. And then after that, um, you can either start cutting down those um, and continuing to nurse at night and like slowly do like cut away once during the day and then start eliminating them at night. Or I think um, you can kind of jump to continuing to keep this pattern. Let's say you're nursing four times a day and start transitioning to, okay, so now remember, like when we go to bed, starting to cut out nighttime feedings, we're going to nurse one time at night. And then we're, you know, this is then connecting that once again for them. We're going to nurse at night one time. And then when we're going to nurse again after the sun comes up, remember our book and we always nurse after the sun comes up and then we're going to have breakfast. And so you um, start to manipulate the nighttime feedings still based on this like expectation the child has of when they will nurse during the day. So um, that's like a short synopsis. She did an entire hour long presentation on how to do this. Um, but that's another technique. Um, I will tell you for me, I weaned my children when they were pretty old. Both of them were four years old. And so they were big and we talked and I explained to them like, you know, this is what we're going to do. And I started cutting down their feedings and they were just nursing first thing in the morning and then just nursing when going to bed. And um, if they wanted something to drink at night, I got them like a sippy cup with water or milk. Um, I started offering them other things, but then we planned out for probably five months prior to the weaning we we planned and we talked and we had a party <laughs> and we talked about it for months we planned a party at their fourth birthday we i made them a book of all of the pictures i had of us breastfeeding from the minute that they were born until that weaning party i left like blank pages for us to post pictures in that book of us on their weaning party day we talked about how uh, my kids were not allowed to chew gum unless they were not breastfeeding so i um we talked about how they're going to get to chew gum now when they're four years old. We had a cake. We had a huge celebration. We um, made a really big deal out of this last breastfeeding. So as we were getting closer to their weaning day, we tried to cut down on the number of times they were nursing, um, you know, base it around, like, hey, we always nurse first thing in the morning and then before we go to bed, whatever it might be. And then when the day came to actually have their weaning party, the very last time we breastfed, we did at the party together and we took lots of pictures and, you know, I said, this is it. This is our last time. And I've loved this breastfeeding relationship so much. And like, let's blow out the candles and our cake together. And you and I did it. We did such a good job. And here's a gift. I got them a gift at the weaning party. And then we would transition from the weaning party straight into birthday and had all the friends over and big birthday celebration. And, um, um, then, and this is not, I know not everyone has this situation, but I was blessed enough that my parents live really close by. My parents took both of my kids when they turned four on a trip for three days to see my sister, their auntie oh, in Sacramento. So for the next three days, they were not with mommy. They went on a big kid trip with grandma and grandpa. They got to go on an airplane. They got to see their auntie and play in Sacramento and do all sorts of fun things. So we went then three days without seeing each other, without nursing. So when they came home, it was like we were just continuing this pattern they'd had for the last three days of not needing to nurse. So, um, there's lots of different ways you can go about weaning, and I think it depends on the age of your child. It depends on what the reasons are that you're weaning, how quickly you feel like it needs to happen. If it's because you're feeling kind of done, um, then you need to really have a lot of communication with your child about that. And I want to encourage you, like breastfeeding is a, it's a relationship. So if you're not wanting to continue breastfeeding, but you're doing it just because you feel like you should, um, that's probably not a good reason to continue nursing your baby. Like you really need to want to do that. Um, babies can sense that if like you're reluctant or you're just kind of, ugh, here we are nursing again. Um, so I would make sure you figure out why it is that you're doing what you're doing, what your timeline is and your goals. Have a lot of communication with your child about it. Um, set up some expectations, some patterns, and some exciting things that are going to happen once they are a big kid and they don't need to nurse anymore and they have been weaned. Um, there should be some transition there so they really feel like, wow, this is different than it was before. I'm a big kid now. Um, okay, so then the next question we had was from um, Berlin, I think, asked what to expect with a five day old baby. Uh, the baby's been cluster feeding a lot. And then a question about wanting to pump a little bit to build up a stash. 
So, okay, yes, the very, very, very first growth spurt usually happens between seven and 10 days. So Berlin, I know a little bit about your history and who you are and your birth. And so I would expect that you'll, you're probably gonna hit that growth spurt in the next couple of days. So you might be feeling right now like the baby's nursing all the time and it might even ramp up. This is often when women feel like, I don't think I have enough milk. This baby literally wants to nurse all the time. The baby's on my breast every 30 minutes. I've latched the baby over 30 times this 24 hour period. There must be something wrong. There is nothing wrong. We expect growth spurts like this. We expect nursing behavior like this at the beginning. We have to remember babies that have been living inside of us for nine months had, they were held for nine months straight. They had food constantly for nine months straight. They heard your heartbeat for nine months. They smelled you for nine months. And now they're out of the womb for days. They're experiencing gravity and light and different textures on their skin, different smells. They're away from you for the first time in their existence. So when they hit a growth spurt, everything in their instinctive body says, I have to be on my mom. Where is my mom? I want to be with her. I want to be attached to her. I want to be fed. We really need to think of our babies like kangaroos for the first like three months, little kangaroo babies that need access to the breast all the time. They are too little to be on their own. We deliver very premature mammals. If we look at all the other mammals compared to ours, Ours are really premature. They cannot eat on their own. They cannot move on their own. They cannot regulate their body temperature very well. They can't even regulate the respiration super well on their own. They are premature and they need us. We are the habitat. Mom is the habitat. We are the safest place. We are what equals survival. So for a baby in the first couple weeks, they need to be with you all the time, nursing all the time. The other part of this, and I believe this is how God really designed it, is that when you are doing that, when you are catering to your five-day-old baby or your seven-day-old baby your two week old baby who's nursing all the time. And this happens till about six weeks, by the way, guys, multiple growth spurts in the first six weeks, babies nursing all the time. There's literally nothing else you can do as a mom besides lay in bed and nurse your baby. Someone better be bringing you food. You might be able to get up and go pee, but you literally, if you're nursing your baby 35 times in a 24 hour period, you're literally doing nothing else but nursing your baby. And guess what? You shouldn't be doing anything else but nursing your baby. So that's perfect. You should be having people bring you food and people should be cleaning the house and people should be playing with the other kids. And there's nothing, nothing that is more important than sitting in bed or on a couch, nursing your baby and resting your body that just delivered a baby. So in these first like six to eight weeks, babies go through crazy growth spurts with the intention of obviously helping themselves grow, maintaining your milk supply, communicating to your body what it is that you need, but also forcing you to sit your butt down and heal because when you're nursing your baby, there's nothing else that you can be doing. <laughs> so Yes, Berlin, you're going to expect a ton of breastfeeding for the next six weeks. A huge growth spurt at seven to 10 days, another huge one at three weeks, and another huge one at six weeks. So those three moments are when most women think that they don't have enough milk. Most women start to supplement. They give just one bottle because my baby seems so hungry. Do not do that. Your baby is going through normal growth spurts. They need to communicate to your body. You need to be nursing all the time in order, hi friend, in order for your body to keep up. Um, the other thing to just be thinking about is you should not pump at all during this time. Like zero, do not pump. Do not get out your pump. Don't touch it, don't look at it, nothing. If you start pumping right now, you can really mess up this your body. <laughs> um, your body might start to think, wait, we have more than one baby here to feed, and you can create an oversupply. And a lot of people are like, ooh, oversupply, I'd love that. No, 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 we don't love that, we don't love that. An oversupply comes with a whole slew of other challenges. You don't wanna be stuck to your pump, having to pump every single day because your body's making too much milk for your baby. So. Um, there is zero pumping that should happen right now, especially like less than six weeks, maybe a month you could consider like putting a hand pump on for five minutes once a day, maybe, but we are not, hi Christina, um, but we are not going to suggest that you do any pumping at this early time. Your body needs to figure out what the baby needs and your baby needs to figure out your body and putting a pump in the mix is just confusing for your body. It's also a lot of work washing things and storing the milk and figuring out when do I do it and I just did it and now the baby needs to eat and it's just, it's not worth it and it's, um, it can really mess you up. So um, one of the things that you can do, which some moms will, is a passive form of cat 
attaching milk, which is different than pumping, but like a haka, if you've heard of a haka, I think I have one right here. Um, yeah, this is um, like a, it's not the same brand, but it's the same idea. This is a passive pump. So what you can do if you have a small baby um, or you're wanting to just catch a little bit of milk, you can use this. And what you do is squeeze it. You can kind of, you can kind of flip it inside out if you want, depending on um, your breasts and their shape and everything like that. But then you're gonna put it over your nipple you've squeezed it, sorry, so that it creates a negative section, put it over your nipple, and then you're going to like let it go, and as you're nursing on one side, you're like letting a little bit of that milk passively go into here. So a lot of moms at the beginning can catch a good amount of milk, maybe an ounce even, at a feeding. So if you're feeling like, oh, I really would love to have just a little bit in my freezer, it's gonna make me feel so much better to have a little stockpile, this is your option. If you actively pump and move milk, you will cause an oversupply and, and, and lots more issues than you need. This is the best option is you passively catch while the baby is nursing a little bit of milk and that's it. The other thing I just want to remind everyone of is if you're, if you're thinking, like we have a lot of moms who will say, I want to pump because I want my husband to take over one of the nighttime feedings so I can sleep. I just need to sleep. I need to have more than like a two hour span of sleep and I really need my husband to take over like the 2 a.m. feeding. Here's the challenge with that. Anytime your baby is getting milk, your body needs to be emptied of milk. So if you want your husband to feed the baby at 2 a.m., you have to wake up and pump at 2 a.m. Especially in this first six weeks, your body is trying to figure out what your baby needs. And if your body goes skipping feedings when your baby's getting food and your body's not getting the message, that can cause a really big problem. That can cause a dip in supply. It can cause your body to not be able to make enough milk in the future because it didn't get good communication at the beginning. So... Dads don't get to help with feeding at the beginning. I'm sorry, they can support you in a lot of ways. They can wake up with you and they should be changing diapers and getting you food and getting you drink, letting you nap during the day. There are lots of ways to support the breastfeeding relationship and support mom during this early time, but feeding the baby so that she can sleep is just not helpful because she can't sleep during that time. She has to wake up and pump. If you're gonna feed the baby, you have to pump. So the only time you really should be pumping is if you are actually away from your baby and we don't suggest you doing that, being away from your baby at the beginning, unless you are away medically, and then you're gonna pump and someone's gonna feed your baby while you're away. But you shouldn't be pumping while you're with your baby because you will create an oversupply issue. Hence, you can catch little bits of milk with the haka. Uh, hi, Carolina. <laughs> Christina says, goodness, don't pump. I know, Christina knows firsthand why I say, don't pump at the beginning. Um, and it's hard because especially when it's your second baby, if you had problems with supply your first time around, there's this feeling of like, oh, I don't want to have that problem again. Let me just make sure I start off pumping right away. But we have to remember second babies are different than first. You have all these like more receptors, more hormones, the hormones, the ability to make milk is just increased with your second baby and your third and your fourth. So your, your chances of you having a supply issue with your second when you had one with your first are really minimal. So, all right, hi friends, thanks everyone for jumping on. I'm just answering some questions that came up earlier. I have a little bit more time before we start our photo shoots today. We still have a few spots available, so if anyone watching this is, decides they randomly want Valentine's photos today, um, please come, we would love to have you. We're doing them at the carriage house from two to four this afternoon. So, um, we had a crazy day earlier and I did not jump on as early as I wanted to and I apologize for that. Okay. Back to some questions that we had um, on the other post. I'm gonna go look at them really, really quick. I got my hair done. It's finally healthy again. It was, uh, it was a mess. <laughs> um, Christina, let me go back and look at yours real quick. All right, I'm back. Um, okay, so Christina, your question is next on my list. Um, okay, so the question from Christina, and give me, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Christina, is basically that she's at work now. The baby is almost two in two days. Um, sorry, I have a house phone. I don't even know the phone number to it. We just have it in case of emergencies. We've taught our children how to use it, <laughs> but it's really annoying. Hold on. Okay. So, um, Christina says she's away from her baby during the day, back to work, and um, you are able to nurse her. 
like sometimes before you leave in the morning, nursing her when you pick her up in the evening at five. Um, she's nursing a lot during the night, I think you said. She's still nursing at night, but it's hard because you're trying to sleep and be able to work. And um, you said you're feeling really full by the end of the day and kind of even leaking and what to do about that. So this is pretty common for mommies like you, Christina, who've been with your babies the whole time that they've been little. Um, this is the first time Christina's worked since her daughter Zoe was born. And once again, she's almost two in two days. Um, about to pop. So we, okay, so when we get to this point in breastfeeding, and I um, have had this experience myself even recently, I, we don't realize, because our boobs, okay, when you first have your baby, they like get engorged, and they're tender, and you can feel when you're full, you can put your finger down and like touch one and the other and know like, oh, I got a nurse on this side before it explodes. And then we get to a point where like they're one, and we don't feel feel that really anymore and then we get to the point where they're two and we're maybe only nursing them a couple times during the day and maybe there's some days where we're at Disneyland and we're busy and we only nurse them even once and we don't feel much of a difference and we don't feel engorged anymore and we don't feel like we're leaking anymore and we kind of wonder am I even making that much milk like is my baby even getting hardly any milk and I know that this happened to me a few months ago my son got sick and all he wanted to do was nurse and I kept thinking like I don't think I have that much milk but sure enough he would nurse and nurse and nurse sit up vomit a massive amount of milk and then you know go fall asleep for 20 minutes nurse and then vomit a massive amount of milk and I thought oh my gosh I had no idea this much milk was going into him and I can see it, it coming out of him. So I know it's going in cause he literally was having nothing else. He would not eat. He would not drink. He just wanted to nurse. So we don't realize one, how efficient our bodies get at moving milk to our babies. It becomes second nature. It's been two years now that your body has said, I know how to do this. Whoop, let me give this milk to the baby. And it happens fast. They can move a lot of milk. We make a lot of milk while babies are nursing. And so sometimes we don't feel this like, you know, full feeling as our babies get older. Now, does it mean we're not making as much milk? No. And so sometimes we don't think like, oh, maybe wait for my baby for eight hours. I don't need to pump. And then you're there and you're like, oh my gosh. My body's wondering where the heck my baby is. I would have nursed probably four times by this point, And my body is like, got the milk and wondering where the baby is. So in situations like this, Christina says the stomach was <laughs> yes. That stomach bug was crazy. Um, so in situations like this, I usually suggest to moms, if you are feeling full, you have got to pump. You've got to take a hand pump with you, or take five minutes and go pump. Um, you can take an electric pump if you have it. You don't have to remove all the milk or like sit back in 30 minutes, but you've got to move it because if it sits, you run the risk of getting clogged ducts and mastitis and all these other issues that are just not worth it. It's totally worth taking five to 10 minutes and going to pump. Um, and I know Christina, in your situation, you've got some autonomy as like your day. So take 10 minutes, take 30 minutes. Employers must give you time. It is against the law for them to not give you time and a space to pump. It cannot be in a bathroom. They need to give you a space that is clean, that has a locked door. Um, and if you need more information about the California laws, you can look them up, but you have rights to pump milk for your baby, regardless of your baby's age. It's not like, oh, you're, you're nursing a two-year-old. You don't get to do that anymore. No, if you need to pump, you are allowed time to do that. It is against the law for them to say no. So I would say you've got to do it. Um, you've got to pump. If the minute you start feeling full, take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, go pump a little bit so that you do not run the risk of getting mastitis and clogged ducts. Now with time over the next few months, your body will start to learn, oh, we're away during the day. And I'm just gonna increase or keep up with my supply at night and I'm gonna decrease the amount that I'm making during the day. Your body will adjust. Now know that when your body adjusts, you don't have to worry about, does this mean I'm losing my milk? Am I not gonna have a supply anymore? Is my breastfeeding relationship over? No, 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 no. Once you have been successfully breastfeeding your baby for a couple months, like if you've made it to six months and you're breastfeeding your baby, there is very little you can do to destroy your like breastfeeding experience or your milk supply by manipulating your day. Going back to work, as long as you are 
with your baby every once in a while and you are nursing them when you're together and you're feeding at night's really the best way to keep up with that supply, your body will continue to make milk. Women can make milk for years, you guys, by nursing their babies once a day. Like this, you don't have to nurse 10 times a day to have a supply. You can nurse one time a day for the next six years and still nurse your baby. So um, a lot of moms, I think our generation, they don't, didn't talk about it much, but a lot of moms, uh, our moms, like the grandmas now, nursed babies a lot longer than they said and kind of like behind closed doors secretly like one time a day when their kid would wake up in the morning or as they went to bed at night because they loved the bonding they loved the cuddling it wasn't considered a cool thing to do or an expectation that you'd nurse a two-year-old or a three-year-old or four-year-old but if you talk to a lot of moms who breastfed they'll say oh yeah i nursed a long time we just didn't tell anyone and I nursed you one time a day for years because I loved it. It was our way to reconnect. I got you the antibodies, all the things. So anyways, I would say there's nothing you can do to ruin your supply at this point in time. No work schedule can destroy your breastfeeding relationship right now. Your body, um, if can manipulate and, and change and make more milk on the weekends when you're together and less milk during the day when you're at work and our bodies are incredible and constantly able to change and adjust and adapt. Um, and right now there's like nothing you can do to jeopardize that. Like your body and your baby can and will figure it out. So I would just rest assured, Christina, you need to pump so that you don't get mastitis um, and clogged ducts, but there's nothing you can do to ruin your breastfeeding relationship with Zoe. Um, and let's see here. It's right now in the hours of 12 to 3 is the worst. Yeah, and you said you were feeling some like sharp, um, that's your letdown probably. I know when I go hours and hours and hours and hours without feeding my son, I will feel a letdown. I don't feel it when he normally nurses. I did like a year ago, but now I don't feel it anymore when he nurses. But if my body, basically my body is like, I've got milk ready. Is the baby around? I've got milk ready. Is the baby? And then eventually my body's like, I have too much milk. Where's the baby? And you have a letdown without any stimulation. And that's when they're painful to me. So that might be what you're experiencing discomfort wise. Um, okay. I hope I answered your question, question Christina. Um, Ryan said, oh, you wish you would have demanded a space. We don't realize sometimes that we can demand a space for pumping. Um, a lot of employers don't realize it, especially if they're the first one to be a pumping and back at work. Um, okay, let's see, question. Uh, this is my question lately, nursing and waking, uh, waking and on sleeping. I wonder what I should do what it would do to longevity or supply. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding the question. Question lately, nursing on waking and on sleeping, and I wondered what it would do to the longevity or supply. She's 15 months. Um, oh, okay, I think I get what you're saying. So, oh, I answered it. Okay, so like just if you were to nurse in the morning and nurse before going to bed, and could you continue doing that? Okay, I got it. Sorry, I had to reread re re the question. Yeah, it's incredible what our bodies can do. And when I, so I nursed Kylie, she was a little over two when Cooper was born. So my entire pregnancy, I nursed Kylie, but she was just getting colostrum. She was moving little bits of colostrum. Then I tandem nursed the two of them for almost two years. Yeah, and then... I nursed just Cooper from when he was like two to like three something. And during that time, for like a whole year, uh, it was just him nursing. And then I was pregnant. And then he got a tiny bit of time where he nursed with Wesley before we did our weaning party. So for Cooper's experience, he had like tandem feeding tons of milk with a two-year-old that brought it all in for him. Then he had this time period where he was the only one nursing, but not very frequently. From like two to three years old, we were only nursing maybe two or three times a day. Um, I don't remember it being all the time. Um, and I'm sure I could look back and see. I'm sure I wrote some notes down at some point in time, but it wasn't super, super frequent. Then when I got pregnant, it was even less because I was a little tender and he was just getting colostrum. He still liked to nurse probably at least a couple times a day, but it wasn't a ton of milk. And then he went back to like being three and a half and having a newborn all of this milk again but he still only nursed maybe once or twice a day so anyways my like what I'm trying to say is my body went through cr like a lot of changes in four years but still got him milk and we still had a breast breastfeeding relationship the whole time and um, it looked different at different stages but um, 
Yeah. It's, it's amazing what our bodies can do to adjust and adapt. And, and like, I mean, this is a crazy thing to think. Let's say you, you go down to nursing just at the beginning, waking and then sleeping. And let's say, heaven forbid, there was some crazy disaster and we had a crazy earthquake down here. You couldn't get to the store. We didn't have running water. And you had like the only way to get your child food was to nurse them your body would increase its supply <laughs> and you would be able to nurse your baby. And it wouldn't be like, oh, well, we were down to just twice a day. I can't increase from here. No, no, your body would be like, oh, got it. And we hear about this happening in other parts of the world in disasters where you know another mom dies and this mom who's breastfeeding takes on that second baby and to keep it alive and her body increases its supply and literally feeds two babies instead of one. It's amazing. So it's totally possible. Um, all right, friends, I, I'm going to go prep for our photo shoot that's happening today, Valentine's Day pictures. Um, as many of you know, this is our way of doing fundraising for our little community carriage house that we're getting going here. We're so excited to be rolling it. We're almost at a one year anniversary. We started in March or April? No, I can't remember. End of March, beginning of April, I think last year. So um, we are really, really excited to be getting close to that one year mark and um, looking, I'm, I'm looking at some different things I'd like to add in this year to what we offer to you guys. So anyways, um, photo shoots are one of the ways that we fundraise and so we're doing one today. We will be doing a big Easter shoot, um, hopefully in March. Right now I'm trying to figure out getting baby chicks again. Last year we had live baby chicks and they were so cute. But this year, um, the woman who breeds them locally is no longer breeding them so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get baby chicks or not I'm working on it I'm working with Mandy to see if we can get some incubators and we can actually try to hash them ourselves uh, more to come on that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it happen but anyways we'll be doing really cute Easter photos so I hope some of you will join us for that and this as we're gonna to try to do this every Saturday this Saturday was a little wonky once again my husband's out of town and um, it was an odd morning which is why we had to do it a little bit later I'm so glad you guys joined me I am gonna be putting all these up on YouTube the one from last week is up on my YouTube, um, and the one from the week before is having a hard time uploading, but I'm going to try to make sure I upload these to YouTube so you can check back in and watch them again, send them to a friend that you think could benefit from the information, and um, I'm hoping to see you all every Saturday. We're going to try to stick to 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Um, like I said, it might, it might vary just based on different things happening in life, but I'm going to try my darndest, and I'll always put a post up either Thursday or Friday where you can put questions in that I will then answer the next day in case you can't jump on live. So friends, it's so wonderful to see you. Thanks for jumping on. Please, if you do end up with any questions, um, you can put them in here and I can totally answer them um, either in a message to you or I can jump on and quickly and do a little video over the next few days answering your questions. So please feel like you can always ask questions. If I don't answer it soon or it doesn't look like I've seen your message, please private message me. Um, I don't always see all my notifications. So please private message me and let me know like, hey, I sent you a question and I will be sure to answer it for you. All right, friends. Um, once again, we still have a few spots for Valentine's photos. If you're local and you want a cute picture of your kids for Valentine's Day, you get five images. It's only $40. I have all the props ready to go and they'll be emailed to you like probably this weekend. Um, with my husband and other kids gone, I feel like I have a little, a little time. So I'm cleaning out my entire house. I'm going to try to edit a lot of photos. So anyways, you'll get them quick for sure before Valentine's day. Um, all right. Have a wonderful Saturday. Uh, enjoy this 80 degree weather. If you're here in Southern California, I cannot believe it's so beautiful outside. This is why I live here. I love it. Tank tops in February. We're in February now, February. It's amazing. All right, friends. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.